Hello, welcome to another episode of Art Rocks with me, James Fox Smith from Country Roads Magazine. Today we're meeting a Lake Charles artist whose colourful Fleur de Lis themed work has been widely sought after and collected far beyond her Louisiana home. But by late 2020, Candace Alexander was locked in an existential battle to save her business after a triple whammy, the COVID pandemic and two hurricanes, one that heavily damaged her shop and studio. But Alexander's unbreakable work ethic and tenacity has paid off. Though this story starts out rough, it does have a happy ending, so stay with it. I've been an artist for 20 years. We are self-sufficient in producing all of my prints. I've been at this for a really long time with a ton of clients and had been having some of my best years as an artist in my life before the coronavirus. We have about 5,000 square feet. I have a studio downtown on Lake Charles. I've been here for 10 years. I have a brand new website we had just launched in early 2020. I have a huge client base that we were just reaching out like through massive text messages. We were rocking it. And then the COVID happened. It basically shut everything down. It put a lot of fear in me personally because I'm basically an entertainer. Festivals and art shows were my bread and butter and they have been since I was out of college. And that all came to a halt and it was kind of intimidating. But then I started to sort of embrace the piece and be creative in things that I wanted to do without any deadline or any, any festivals on the horizon. I started getting more spiritual, I started meditating, really being clear on what it was that I wanted to do. What I started to realize is that artists had a chance to write music, and create or, or make new pieces and just really have a time with themselves. It took something spiritual to get there and then I did. So I was at home with the chickens, it was a great time to like do yard work, make the yard really beautiful, fountains. We made a butterfly garden. I was painting, I was doing a lot of writing, meditating, so it was a very quiet time to just get creative in different ways that you couldn't before the COVID happened. And then Hurricane Laura came. That was very tough. It went from complete like flat line of peace to complete chaos and it was a huge adjustment. I actually evacuated to Mississippi and I stayed up till five in the morning watching the meteorologist that was live downtown and I saw the windows blow out of the Capitol One Tower and I'll never forget the feeling of like oh my god you know I have 12 or 15 foot windows and I just know that this is going to be bad and it was worse than bad when I got here. I was a little traumatized before I even came to the studio. I was almost avoiding coming here because half of the wall was gone, like the stucco and stuff, it was all exposed. Every window had blown out, not outside of the store, but inside the store. Every piece of glass, the glass wasn't tempered, it was on everything, in everything. There was jewelry all over the floor. You look around and you see thousands and thousands of tiny pieces, it was all mixed with glass. My shop goes around the whole block and it was just such a terrible feeling of 20 years of your life had journals in the front window, the pages were scattered everywhere here. My paintings flew down the street. People were texting me, hey, I found your painting in my yard. These were four by eight feet. These paintings like literally flew out of the studio like kites. It was very, very crazy feeling. I think I walked around here for two weeks just saying, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I had people coming in from Shreveport, Lafayette, my clients coming in to help and they just wanted to know what to do. And it's, I, I had no direction, no leadership to tell them where to even start. We tarped up the windows and that was something, a little bit more feeling of peace. But then the cleanup, they started ripping the walls. It had flooded a little bit in here, thank God. The nine feet that they projected never happened because it had been a lot worse. My old car, we just drove it out because there were no doors. In this studio, Maybe 75% that I salvaged next door. The word salvage doesn't necessarily mean the way it was before the hurricane, but next door was uh, 20 years of my archives and college work and pieces that I just wanted to keep that we didn't really open that side. 
Every one of those paintings either had a gash in it, drywall ceiling with the rain, mildew on the back. Every piece over there was affected in some way. And then we had Delta. That was right around the corner, I guess a month after that. And so for Hurricane Delta, I took my stuff, what I needed to, to make a living as an artist online, and I evacuated to Ocean Springs, Mississippi. And I stayed there for a month in my RV on the river, doing a lot of like meditating, kind of getting getting some peace. My studio was still tarped up at the time. And I had made refuge in a little fishing shed in Ocean Springs. And here comes Hurricane Zeta. And so I have to move out of the fishing shed. Two days before Hurricane Zeta, I moved out and the entire fishing shed that I had set up, cinder block walls blown out. Third hurricane, yeah. So I came back home to Lake Charles. With the coronavirus, and with three hurricanes, 2020 ended up being my best year of my life. Partially that's because I had the hurricane art that you see back there and people really loved it. There were people coming in here that didn't even have roofs or homes and they had to have the art that I was doing. That was truly a blessing. And then I didn't have really much time to sulk. As an artist, I do what I do because I feel like in order to survive, I have to. And so I knew that the impact of the hurricane and how much of a huge devastation and change that it made on the community in Lake Charles, I felt it was my responsibility to almost document a piece historically about the hurricane. And little did I know how well people would respond to it. I wasn't doing it for the sales. I wasn't doing it to, to get my name out there. I wasn't doing it to brand. I was doing it because I felt like there was a release that had to happen as an artist. The first one is called Hope because I wanted to do a piece that kind of mimicked the chaos and the destruction. And then I wanted to have words that was sort of like the peace and the hope. So in that piece, you'll see statue on the ground, you'll see the CM tower, the windows blown out, and just all this massive confusion, which I really feel like resonated with a lot of people in my community. The second one, Faith, was made in Mississippi, where I evacuated to after Delta. And in order to have hope, we all had to have faith. And so Faith was more of a spiritual piece. It had the red cloak in it. It had the flag. It had the waves separating the sea in that piece. And it still had a glimpse of the hurricane. Love, it has a tree of life in it. It has a sort of a mandala piece in the center. I wanted to add a bridge in love. It's got a relation to Michelangelo's hands. And then it has my hand with a paintbrush in it. And it also has the CM Tower. It's got a tree full of hearts in it. Love was pretty much the final piece of the three, hope, faith, and love. It's basically the trinity that I wanted to suggest in the hurricane pieces. All three pieces actually connect on the edges to make one huge piece. I did a lot of praying and meditating after the hurricane, and I just had to have faith that things were going to change and pick up, and they did. I've always been a believer that you have to stay true to who you are and what you do, and it will all work out. You can't give up. Drive, determination, perseverance, and never giving up on what you love to do.